Welcome everyone to our scholarship presentation and workshop. My name is Amy Bencomo, College and Career Center Specialist at Prospect High School. I'm really happy that you're here. This is going to give you an overview of how to understand workshops, um, scholarships, how they work, and how to plan for them for your college education. So first, you know, the fundamental reason of why we have scholarships is to pay for college. So um, this is to reduce your overall cost. So what you really need to know first is how much will your education cost and how, what is a reasonable amount to contribute to that sum. So the first thing that you, that you need to do this goes for everyone, even people who, um, a lot of times people see completing the FAFSA or the California Dream Act as a, a waste of time because it, it doesn't um, provide you enough money. However, colleges still need that information and it also acts as insurance in case something dramatic happens to your family, injury, death, or a global pandemic. So um, it's, a, it's a little bit of insurance. So complete your FAFSA or DREAM Act and know your EFC, which is your expected family contribution. Colleges will base their need aid on this number. And the lower your personal number, your EFC, the higher the aid. So um, this is really the one time when you're really happy to have um, maybe a low income. What we also want you to do is while you are investigating colleges and scholarships, know the acronyms that are going to be used. So the EFC, Expected Family Contribution, the index number that colleges use to determine how much financial aid you're eligible to receive, and the COA, which is cost of attendance, is the average annual cost to attend a particular school. It includes tuition, fees, room and board, books, supplies, and other expenses. However, I will tell you, whenever they say other expenses, they don't include those midnight runs to Taco Bell when you're studying for finals or maybe a flat tire or parking ticket. So keep that in mind too. So the cost of attendance. Every college and university will have this COA tool available for you. You can simply do a web search, COA, the name of the school, and then you, you will be directed to it. There's also another tool that I really like, which is Edmit. It's a site that not only provides the COA, but gives potential earnings based on your major from that school and the estimated debt upon graduation and what those monthly payments could be. So, that has elevated what students are now able to know going into college, which um, financial literacy is really paramount when you're thinking about which school to go to. So the little tip here is many students acquire student loans. So always know your total debt and consider it like buying a car upon graduation. So $30,000 or less is a reasonable amount of debt. You just think of it as buying a car. A, a college graduate can buy a Honda, but you don't wanna buy a Porsche or a luxury car because that's not reasonable as a recent graduate. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about total debt. So once you know the cost of attending a school and your family's expected contribution, you'll be able to determine how to supplement the rest of the owed amount with scholarships. And another little point of reference for you is that most CSUs average about $30,000 a year and UCs are about 40. And many private schools will find a way to match that amount depending on what your GPA is. And so it's, it's a great way to attend um, more schools for about the same amount of price. And, and you know, we can go into 
more information about going out of state and having it be even less expensive, but that's, that's a whole different presentation. And um, you can email me and ask me those questions. So many schools will automatically match you with scholarships at the time of admission based on your merit and your need. And just so that you know, merit is what you've already done in high school. It's going to be your GPA. So you've earned that. And then your need is based on your EFC, which is you need the help. So, uh, and a lot of schools will do that automatically to help you out and make it easy. Um, additionally, you can contact the college directly for more information on scholarship opportunities. Sometimes it's as easy as picking up the phone and asking. You have that right. You lose nothing by asking. It's also a great way to build a relationship with the financial aid office. If you're looking for scholarships, if that's important to you, these are the people that you wanna know. So pick up the phone anyway, so that you can supplement that, um, the cost. Other sources, besides the college is always going to be the number one source, but another source is going to be place of employment. Now this would be your parents, your grandparents, and maybe your employer. I know that if you work for Starbucks, they have a great scholarship and that's something to look into. Another source are gonna be organizations that you're a member, maybe foundations, religious or community organizations, local businesses for civic groups, professional associations related to your field of interest or clubs. Now this might include like the Rotary Club. I know that they give a lot of scholarships and um, maybe the Elks Club and, um, no, I'm actually in. So those are places that you wanna look into and, um, and ask, always ask sources. Um, and that, you know, the sources go to the ones closest to you, like your parents or um, grandparents and even neighbors. Um, you know, anytime a neighbor is asking, how's that college application going? You can, you can say, you know what would be great is if I knew of a scholarship, because maybe they know. And, um, and it's a great way to divert the conversation so that you're not always ask, you know, answering those questions about colleges. So some tips. Go for those small scholarships because a lot of people do not go for them. And so they're left with not enough applicants. And when I mean small, under a thousand. So you, you may think it's a lot of work to, to write a, an essay for a $500 scholarship or a $250 scholarship, but if it's an hour's worth of work, that's pretty good pay for, for an hour's worth of work. Um, the larger scholarships, 20,000 or more or 10,000, a lot of people apply to those. So they are more competitive. Keep applying for scholarships throughout college. You do not stop applying for colleges the moment you start attending college. So go ahead and apply for those scholarships, especially if it's important to you. Be organized, no deadlines so that you don't miss out on opportunities and become comfortable with fine tuning your stories and qualifications. If you read the scholarship, a lot of times there's nuances of what they're looking for. So you might adapt an essay that you already have to, to fine tune that story. And line up multiple copies of your trans, um, transcripts and recommendations so that you're always prepared. If you ask someone to write a letter of recommendation for a scholarship, go ahead and, and tell them, do you mind sending me a PDF of this? And please, make it somewhat generic so that I can use this again. That's okay. If we're writing a letter, we're happy to, to, for you to use it as many times as you want. So that's okay to ask. Steer clear of sweepstakes and contests. Any scholarship that says, hey, 
just give me your email and you could win $20,000. Well, they're actually selling your information and um, I haven't heard of anyone who, who's actually been awarded a scholarship that way. And the lastly, just keep at it. Don't lose hope. Um, have a routine. There's a lot of people who have kept at it and have actually reduced the cost of their education um, by a great deal with their tenacity. Now, a little bit more on fine tuning your stories. Applying for many scholarships can seem exhausting, especially if each one requires an essay or resume. You can recycle your essays with just a few adjustments to make it relevant for each scholarship. Take time to refine a few stories from your life that exemplify different positive traits that scholarship providers are likely to be looking for. You've probably already written about them in your college applications. And what I mean by examples, community involvement. A lot of scholarships love that. How are you um, involved with your community? So think, think about that and how can you fine tune that story for a particular scholarship? So make sure you always read the details of the scholarship so that it feels personal to, to them when they're reading it. The essay. Um, most scholarship organizations ask you to write an essay about yourself and your future plans. Your essay is your chance to speak directly to the scholarship committee, as well as to share your unique story. You want your story to be compelling, authentic, and valuable. So um, a key scholarship essay tip from an expert um, says, a great way to capture attention is by starting the story or painting, a, um, by starting with a story or painting a picture for the reader. Start at the most intense moment of the story, the main plot, and then rewind it if you need to give some backstory. Pearson also recommends tying the core values so that the reader understands who you are and what's important to you. Students should identify values that are important to them and relate to those in their essay. This naturally leads to a more passionate, memorable essay, which can increase the odds of winning. So take time to learn the background, core values, and mission statements of the organization, of the organization offering the scholarship. So it can be weaved into the essay when it corresponds with the prompt and your personal values. Tying them into your response shows that you've done your homework. And I really, I cannot stress that enough. Sometimes you will be interviewed. You will write an essay and then you will be interviewed with a, a panel um, deciding whether or not you, you'll be awarded this um, scholarship. You want to know about the organization offering the scholarship because it's flattering to them. But when you don't, when you're not able to answer some of their questions, they scratch their head thinking, why are you applying if you know nothing about us? So make it personal, read a little bit about who's offering it so that you can tie, tie in um, those little nuggets to your essay. What I really want you to remember when you walk away from here is that your college of attendance will be the best resource. Have a scholarship goal and be willing to dedicate time. Know your deadlines and have several copies of required documents. If you have all of that, you will be prepared. Um, now, an, an example for the College of Attendance as the best resource is they receive a lot of outside offers of scholarships that will, they can match with you. So with an ongoing list and anytime you say, I really just need um, a little more scholarship, sometimes they have a leadership scholarship that 
it's kind of a generic one that they use to um, give students who just ask. So you lose nothing and they, I have a long scholarship list and any school in the Campbell Union District has a huge scholarship list in Naviance. But, but the ones in, at the colleges, they're even longer. So um, tap into that and definitely know what your goal is because that's going to help you organize yourself and, um, and you know, be able to congratulate yourself when you achieve the goal. And of course, you know, you have to know the deadlines, otherwise you'll just miss out. Where to find scholarships? In addition to what um, was already mentioned, the College of Attendance, your place of employment, organizations, your school counselor. This is why you fill out the brag sheet, not just for those letters of recommendation, but a lot of times we are asked to nominate students. We do not list that on Naviance. We approach students directly. So if you have your brag sheet complete, we know more about you so that we can match you with scholarships. Looking on Naviance, and then um, a great app, which I recommend is Raise Me. Colleges also recommend this, and you can put everything on your phone, scroll through and start filling out apps on your phone. It's super easy. And um, if your parents complain that you're always on your phone, you can go, but I'm looking for scholarships. And um, sometimes that can alleviate a little bit of, uh, of the tension that may pop up if you're on your phone a lot. Um, another site is Going Mary. So those are really my two favorite outside sites for scholarships and they're easy to navigate and use. So that's what I, I recommend. And now I'm gonna open it up for questions, but before I do that, I just wanna point out this bit.ly link will give all of my resources, including this um, presentation, which will have all the embedded links to it. So I am going to stop recording.